For the first video, I decided to choose something very basic. So I'm going to cover two different things. So Raymond Davis said he wants to learn about the credit terms such as charge-offs, collections, et cetera, and what the differences are. And then I Don't Buy Bull wants to learn uh, to remove an accurate, not inaccurate, but accurate negative accounts that's hurting their credit. So what I did was I just made a one pager and you can find the link to this down in the description box. So we have collections, third party, collections, debt buyer, charge offs, repossessions, foreclosures, hard inquiries, and late payments. So very simply, collections that are third party is basically when the original creditor uh, you know, cannot collect on a debt and they hire a collection agency to try to recover the debt. Um, so neither the original creditor or the collection agency are paid unless the debtor actually pays on this. And the agreement would look either like a 40-60 or 60-40 um, share. So what that would mean is that if the debt is $100, then, you know, someone would get 60 bucks and someone would get 40 bucks if it's paid on or, you know, vice versa. So um, a debt collector that is a debt buyer is a little bit different. So the example that I used is the same example in the article that I shared the other night where Capital One is the original creditor and they sell a $10,000 debt to portfolio recovery. Um, and it's not supposed to say recovery, it's supposed to say recovery for $2,000. So portfolio recovery is literally purchasing the debt for $2,000, um, but they can actually um, attempt to collect $10,000 out of the $10,000, even though they only paid $2,000 for it. So um, Capital One writes off $8,000. Okay, so um, this is, a, so a charge off is basically, you know, sold somewhere after six months to a debt collector um, if they are in fact going to sell the debt. Sometimes the original creditor actually keeps the account and never sells it. So that is the difference between those two uh, collection types. So then we have charge-offs. So a charge-off is where um, the original creditor cannot recover the debt and they write it off um, as unrecoverable. So this is kind of like, let me use an example with uh, Verizon. Verizon normally does not sell to a collection agency, although in some cases they do. And I would say nine times out of 10, I see it happen uh, where they sell it to Jefferson. Besides that, they keep it in house and they do not sell it and they basically write it off. Okay, so um, a repossession is either voluntary or involuntary. And uh, voluntary is obviously, you know, you gave the vehicle back and involuntary, they came and like swooped it from your driveway or, you know, while you were at the taco stand, whatever. So a repossession is very difficult to get off. But if you do a Google search, you can actually find a letter that can be used for um, accounts that are older than two years, meaning the repossession occurred more than two years ago and they have not taken you to court and it's very, very, very effective. Okay, so foreclosures, that's where the mortgage property is reclaimed after the mortgager fails to pay and hard inquiries. So a creditor inquired into a consumer's credit report and the inquiry shows as you know creditor name and the date the inquiry occurred. And then lastly, late payments. I do not have, you know, any public records on here. Those are very, very simple to understand. Bankruptcies, tax liens, evictions. But a late payment occurs when uh, the consumer does not pay for an account on time or within the grace period, you know, if there's actually one um, that exists. So some consumers argue that they were not 30 days late and that they were only 10 days late. But, I mean, regardless of... 10 days or 30 days, they still report, uh, excuse me, reports as 30 days because they're not going to report you as 10 or 11 days late. Um, the second thing was removing accurate negative accounts. So basically what I'm stating here is that whether an account is accurate or inaccurately reported on one's credit, it must be legally verified. So how do you actually get an accurate negative account removed? So Basically, you need to get them to legally verify it. And when I say illegally, that means that they can't just state that the consumer 
excuse me, that the creditor has uh, verified the consumer's um, account. So an account may state that a consumer has a balance of $10,000, but whether it's reported accurately or inaccurately, you know, it must be legally verified by initiating an investigation with the credit bureaus. So to remove an accurately listed item, let's say that a consumer does in fact owe the 10,000 bucks. You know, that means that the balance is accurate, but what about the other elements of the account, such as the open date, monthly payment, high balance, last payment date, et cetera. So you need to look at the entire account, literally the whole shebang. So if the account is disputed, was the required notice of dispute entered within the required 30 day time frame from the date they received the notice, um, excuse me, the dispute letter for section 623. It literally has to say disputed by consumer or, you know, something like that. Okay. So if not, then it's not reported accurately and the account has to be removed. Did they send proof that the balance is reported accurately or did they just say that the creditor verified it? So another example would be if a $10,000 account is charged off and sold to um, LVNB, not LNBN, um, then they have to report it as sold because they no longer own the account. So if the collector now reports the debt on the credit report, there's only one that can report the balance. So I mean, is it accurate that the ten thousand dollars, you know, that the ten thousand dollar account was sold? Yes. Is it accurate that LVN V knows that account? Yes. But what about who's reporting the balance and whether the original account is reported accurate? Excuse me, accurately regarding the ownership. So you have to look at the entire breakdown of the account. Um, you can even look at things like the account terms and the account type. So just because something is reporting accurately, whether that be the balance or, um, you know, the monthly payment or whatever, you need to look at the uh, every single element of the account. And I know that I'm reiterating it, but that's very, very important. So it doesn't matter whether you own the account, whether, it, you know, you know about it, whether the balance is accurate, whether the open date is accurate, look at the other things and dispute whatever you can in order of importance, like I've shown you in other videos, and you'll be able to get that account removed. Because remember, it has to be legally verified, okay? Because otherwise, they're just reporting whatever the hell they want to because they're being paid to do so. Okay, so you actually have to force them to initiate an, an investigation. So... Um, I am going to be posting another one next Wednesday or Thursday, more than likely it's going to be Wednesdays, so 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and this week, Sunday, is going to be another live giveaway, and it's going to be to a mother, because it's Mother's Day, so if you'd like your free consultation for a credit sweep, you can schedule yours today at expertcreditsweeps.com forward slash book dash online which is this link that you see right here all right expertcreditsweeps.com forward slash book dash online if you need help and you'd like me to take over your credit sweep so i